Hi everybody, welcome back to the second of my two-part interview with Richard Wilkes, star of Louis Theroux's documentary, Gambling in Las Vegas. Um, we get into the specifics of that documentary a little bit later on, but to start with, I wanted to ask him, what is the oddest request for a comp he's ever received from a high roller? Enjoy. Well, I don't, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really give out too much information and I keep a lot of stuff confidential Absolutely. because that's what's gained me those relationship is the respect. Mm -hmm. I can give you, I'll give you a story that happened. I had it in my book. Um, I had, to, I took care of the Sopranos for almost 10 years. While they were on TV, I took care of the Sopranos. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the casinos had them in for the first time for a big Saturday event. Well, guess what? They didn't do anything for them Friday night. Mm -hmm. So I had the, enter I reached out, I, I do the entertainment lawyer for all of them. I reached out and said, look, they're not doing anything for you Friday. I'll send over limos. We'll get them over. He says, no, we'll get the limos over. You just take care of dinner for us. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to go to Nobu. Well, Nobu wasn't, it was a, what we call a hard comp because a hard comp is something you have to pay that company for. Mm -hmm. So it's every dollar. Yeah. So we arranged it. Tony Soprano, God bless his soul. Um, and the main cast came and we sat him in. We sat him in uh, Nobu, had dinner. Uh, I gave every, but everybody $250 worth of chips, all the stars, $250 worth of chips. Jimmy said he had to go back, he was tired, so I walked into the limo. And we went up to the Peacock Lounge, which is a, a high limit at, at the Hard Rock. And I had everybody, Andrea De Matteo, who played Adriana on there, she was awesome. She didn't gamble, she just, she'd hang up in the pit with me. I mean, like, I said, you can't be in here. She was, F you, Richie. I'm staying right here with you. And I, I, she was just, everybody was, they were like friends. I always say that, and I said it in Louis uh, in the BBC, uh, Gambling in Las Vegas. Everybody becomes a friend. I don't see them as a client because everybody becomes a friend and you get personal with them. And they trust you because a star is somebody that, that's that big. I don't treat them like a star. I treat them well like I treat anybody. Mm -hmm. But I treat them like somebody, like their buddy, like their friends, you know? Like, so they get comfortable faster, and that and that's the thing. And I've always got their back, and mm -hmm. they can trust me. And that that's what gained me a lot of those relationships. Yeah. So you got a picture. We're sitting there, a couple guys over here, a couple guys over here. One table has one spot open, and you've got Michael, Michael Imperioli sitting there, play Christopher. You got Mark Pucco there, you know? You got uh, Stevie Van Zandt from Bruce Springsteen's van, you know, like you got it. everybody sitting at the table, one spot's open. And a guy walks up with jeans, t shirt, and a hat. He goes, Rich, you think I can sit there and play with the Sopranos? I looked at him, I said, I don't know, let me ask. I said, Hey, guys, you mind if Matt Damon plays with you? It's <laughs> Matt Damon. He was fans of the Sopranos, and and, Sopr and, and and Sopranos were fans of Matt Damon, so it all worked out well, and it was cool because I took care of Matt and I took care of them, so. That's a cool story. That is a really cool story. And, and that's something that's, <laughs> that, that I'll never forget because of yeah. how that happened. Yeah. Uh, another good story I'll tell you real quick was Jimi Hendrix's dad. I believe he was 82 years old. So, uh, he was in a wheelchair just because he, he had a hard time walking. His, his daughter, who ran the estate for Jimi Hendrix, he wanted to always come into Vegas and see all his stuff, his son's memorabilia. Mm -hmm. And because Peter Morton at the time was the, one of the biggest collectors, him and, um, oh, I forget the, uh, one of the guys from Microsoft, they were, they were the biggest collectors of Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. We had a huge Jimi Hendrix display. As soon as you walked in, a huge glass display of a lot of Jimi Hendrix. And then there was stuff all throughout the hotel of him. He wanted to come in and see it. So they wheeled them in, they came in, they brought it. There was a football player, famous football player with them. She was dating the guy from Earth, Wind & Fire. Uh, there was a guy from Earth, Wind & Fire, the lead gu uh, guitarist, and it was unbelievable. And um, the way things work, where well, I told you networking, mm -hmm. the, the synergy and how small this world is, I happen to know the guy from Earth, Wind & Fire because at one of the Microsoft things that we were protecting, the the, the, uh, the executives, Earth, One, and Fire performed one night. Right. And we had to keep everybody back from them, and we met them, and it was cool. So I gained that relationship. So when he came in with her, he had a connection at the Hard Rock to call, which was me. Amazing. So we sat, and, and we never, back then, you would never pull up a chair to the craps table. Right. We did it for Jimi Hendrix's dad. 
and he sat at that table for an hour and a half and played craps. And then two months later, um, I heard of his passing. I had to help supply security there for my guys in Canada. But, um, you know, it, to be able to say that I helped show Jimi Hendrix's dad around Fabulous, yeah. and be part of something that made him very happy, these are stories that will always stay with me. Mm -hmm. And not everybody knows. No, no, that's, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so just moving on a bit to um, the, the D, Golden Gate, and obviously Serga that's coming up. Certainly, I think, um, in terms of the feedback I get, I think the biggest buzz in Vegas right now is Circa opening. Uh, forget Resorts World and everything else, and I think everyone is waiting for it to open. Is there anything you can tell me about that? And uh, how, it, I mean, it's ultra exciting. Ultra I think, exciting. I think, you know, go on, if you're, you're big on Twitter, go on Circa Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. At Circa Las Vegas, you'll see some of the, the renderings. Um, you saw it being built. You showed the picture of it being built. Yeah, I mean, it's, it it's, amazing. it's going up fast. It'll yeah. be open in December. Yeah. We have six pools, 150 foot screen to watch sports on or yeah. watch anything by the pool. Uh, you're gonna have cabanas out there. Yeah. You're gonna have the biggest sports book in the world. You have five, I, I believe five different restaurants are gonna be really cool. Uh, it's it's gonna be something down the town that's gonna be a, uh, it's gonna, it's, it's just gonna be a game changer. You know, it's going to be something you come into Las Vegas, you're going to want to come see. It's going to be a, a lounge on the top of the building that you're going to be overlooking all of all of Las Vegas. Yeah, It'll means. be the tallest building in downtown. Yeah. Okay. So things like that, I mean, it's just going to be something. I'm pretty sure it's still happening, but Derek, I think, out of his own pocket, got a million dollars worth of gold. And he's putting it in, in that upper lounge. Right. He's putting it in there in some way or another. Right. I'm okay. not going to tell you, you have to come and check it out, but he's going to have it up there some way or another. So you have to come and see that because a million dollars in gold is going to look pretty damn good. Absolutely. Well, I want to come on opening night. If, I, if there's any way I can come from the UK for opening night, absolutely, 100%. And I'm going to try to have Louis come in and film that place. So that. we'll it. see if we have a part two in Circa. Oh, there you go. So we'll that's, that, that's a good little lead on to the, to the main <laughs> event there, actually. Uh oh. Uh, here we go. <laughs> um, just a bit of background really for the people that are watching. Obviously, um, how this, how I got in contact with you is one of my um, viewers, uh, uh, Kim Ozels from uh, Australia. Uh, basically, Louis was on a book tour, um, and as a as a attendee to the book tour, you could um, put a question to him, and he selected a certain number, and uh, his happened to be um, selected. I'm going to ask you the question later anyway. Um, Obviously, I then put the video onto Twitter. You then saw it, and then um, Louis responded to you. I mean, quite quite a cool little story, and, uh, and it seems like he, you know, he, he's up for it. Um, just in terms of the original documentary, um, how did you become involved in the first place? Uh, they they reached out to me. They, they needed a place to sh to shoot. They reached out to me to see. Um, I believe it came. You know, there's so many so many things that have come through. But one of my mentors, Steve Sear. Um, is somebody that's a little bit older than me that's been in the business a little bit longer. He's he's strictly taking care of just whales. Like mm -hmm. uh, he did whale hunt in the desert in his book. So he, he was very technical in a lot of high rollers. Um, I learned a lot from him what to do and what not to do. He gets a lot of requests for documentaries and stuff. Some that I don't get, he gets. Yeah. He couldn't do it. Uh, he didn't have a place. He was an independent rep. So he I think he passed it on to me and, and Stewart, his producer, got a hold of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, we kind of, they asked me if I could bring in some players. I said, well, you're in luck, I can, I can do that. And uh, I had a handful of players. Like, you, you saw the guy playing at craps, that's Bob Hawkinsmith. Mm -hmm. Bob is one of my guys, you just didn't see me in that scene. Right. He pulled out a lot of money and says, let's see what we can do. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy, our, our casino manager was there, he was part of that. Bob's my tax, my tax, uh, my tax guy. Oh, okay. You know? right. yeah. and I've known him 25 years as long as I've been here, right. you know? so. We're best friends, and he's he's a gambler, yeah. you know, and he still he comes down here to gamble yeah. still, you know. So that's how I did. I gathered a bunch of people that I knew that would want to be on film and didn't mind being on film. Mm -hmm. That would give uh, Louis and, and his production team some some good B roll and some good some good film, mm -hmm. you know. So that's how I got contacted, and and from there, you know, you guys saw it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is. Um I'm sure you're aware, but in the UK, the, that that documentary, I would say, without question, is the best Vegas documentary. We've had a number. We've had Piers Morgan, we've had Trevor McDonald, we've had uh, Eamon and Roof, which we'll talk about a bit later. Um, but but um, Louis' uh, documentary is head and shoulders 
about any of them. Nobody really. does it quite like Louis. No, no, no. His, his, his questioning technique and his general uh, sort of demeanour around people, it just, it just, it's just fantastic. And uh, I, I think it, I would probably say it's, it's his most famous one, which obviously means, in turn, with you being on it, and it gets repeated uh, viewings in in uh, in the UK. Um, you're then famous. So I know just from again from my channel how many times people ask about you where, where, where is Richard Wilk these days that's pretty cool. um, so you must get recognized yeah, I'm and very, have people coming into the D all the time I have to tell you I'm very humbled by it because yeah. it's, it's it's pretty interesting like we shot that in 2005 yeah 2005 is 15 yeah, years 15 ago 15 years ago we yeah. shot that yeah. and, and to hear people so I used to people from the UK and then Europe would come in and, and say, hey, you're, you're that guy, or you're Richard, or how's Alan, or yeah. always. And can I get a picture with you? I, yeah, absolutely, I'm old buddy, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to. After the last few years, I couldn't say, oh, you're from the UK. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't say that anymore because it hit YouTube and yeah. a million people saw it. Yeah. Now people were seeing it from Canada, from the US, from Australia, from, it was crazy how that got around. And then I would still talk to people from the UK because a lot of people follow my social media. Mm -hmm. And they would say, um, and it's played four times a year over there, or it's played on Virgin on the way over, and they watch it yeah. on the way over yeah. here, and they, they kill an hour, you know? And it's it's amazing how much that is played. But I always said it's it's it was a beautiful chemistry that happened between Louis and Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. What he brought out in Las Vegas, what I was able to get him in the way of Alan, and it's like, what you saw with Alan, you don't see anywhere no, on no, TV. No. You don't see that detail. You don't get to talk to high rollers like that. Yeah. Um, so, and I think I, I do think that's what set it apart from the others. That you, you know, you, you've got that insight into what drives them and what uh, you know, why they're here, and it really it just showed it so well. And I didn't give out any confidential information. I kept my my player private. You yeah. know, Alan and, and and everything. And all you saw was him gambling a lot of money on the tables. Sure. Yeah, did he lose? Yeah, he lost. But nobody knows what the number was. I mean, it was that's just the way it is. And Louis tried to pry, and Louis's <laughs> great at that. Louis's great at trying to get all the information. But um, it was interesting. And then he had Dan, the man there, that was playing baccarat. He won a little bit of money with him, and that was great. And we had that conversation at the uh, where Louis won, I think, sixteen hundred or something like that. Yeah, so yeah. where do you make sixteen hundred in in that short a period yeah, of time? You know, well, and, well, let's see. And and he was and it was he was actually getting quite into it. At that he point, was generally it? happy. He was excited. I never seen Louis the whole time being like that. You know, the guy barely cracked a smile sometimes, but yeah. he was happy, and it was good to see because what we did we affected his mm. demeanor. We we changed the way Louis portrayed himself. Yeah. How many documentaries have you seen Louis smile? And get all happy about. I see him on his book tour. He's always smiling yeah. and everything. But but that's he has a very him. understated uh, way yes. about him. But but that's why he does what he does so well. Very. He, well. He's not in your face, so it's no. it's very understated. It's very um, understanding, and, he, and that draws more information out of out of people. I think. And I think um, and I think the the big deal too was when he did that. He got a lot of genuine questions, a lot of genuine genuine answers, mm. because the fact is he he questioned you off the cuff. Yeah. He would question you as I'm trying to get that credit card for Alan to go shopping yeah, yeah, with. Yeah. People say, "Oh, you only gave him three thousand. Look at how much." People, well, he usually gets five. Yeah. But it was the beginning of the trip. Yeah. You know, and he hadn't been in for a while, so I couldn't play around with it. And I have to go by what the bosses say. But I, as you saw, I pushed for him yeah, to get yeah, the yeah. highest possible. Yeah. So I was in the best interest of him, but also keeping the best interest of the company in mind. Yeah. But it was also the beginning of the trip. Yeah. If he, we were already three days into it and it was at the end of the trip and he wanted more, yeah, he would have got it, whatever he wanted. He probably would have got even more. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning of the trip, you can only go by what business allows you to give. Mm -hmm. And you can predict a little bit of it too. Mm -hmm. And on there, you heard me say, hey, he's got about 160,000 in theoretical or something. Mm -hmm. So that tells you there are some big numbers. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, so when it comes down to it, that Louis was able to see that in action and able to ask questions off of that. And there's no way I can answer except genuine because how do I have that much time to think about it? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, so absolutely. the beautiful thing about Louis in the documentary was that it was real. Mm -hmm. It was real life. You got real answers. Yeah. And anybody, any haters or anybody that was negative about that, they can think all they want. But at all times, Alan's godfather, my kid. Yeah. Alan was one of my best friends. He still is. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change. Mm -hmm. I'm just the type of guy that would say Alan. 
Let's go eat. Mm. Let's go do something. It's not going to change anything. No, well, it's not. No, it it really doesn't. No. But, and I said that on camera. Mm. Now, would executives above me hate that? Yeah, they don't. Leave them on there. No, mm. because I know how it works. Yeah. You know, leave them on there. Yeah, leave them on there. He can win more. He can lose more. Whatever. He's been on there too long. Mm. He needs to eat. Let's go eat. Yeah. If he says no, fine. Yeah. Let him stay. Yeah. But at least I try. So he's just gonna come back and play more. Well, he will. Do, yeah. We did it at the Nugget. Yeah. You know, we did it at the Nugget. He was, had a whole craps table to himself. He was playing craps. You guys never got to see that. Mm. He played craps back then, and he was rolling forever. Mm. We left the chips on the table because he said I'm hungry. I said just leave them. Mm. Left the chip, chips on the table. Put a box on it. We went up to the Italian restaurant, ate, came back down, and played again. Mm. Didn't change anything. No. Nobody got on that table and played. No, it all stayed the same. Yeah, yeah. You see what I mean? No, so, no, totally. Yeah. So people saying, oh yeah, he. he he just wants them to lose. No, because if you win, I see you more. Mm. That's my philosophy. And if you come in the first time and you win, that's the best marketing I can give you. Very true. <laughs> you win, I see you again because you feel lucky here. Yeah, yeah, completely. And you can win the next two times. Completely. Listen, we get you eventually. Yeah, he said, well, that is very true. You I mean, having come to Vegas for 21 years, I can vouch for that. You see those lights on the strip? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. those are Someone's got to pay for it. <laughs> exactly. Somebody's got to pay for it. So, yeah. so I, I, I've seen a lot of it on YouTube. I see a lot of people with negative like negative comments and that and there's always going to be jealousy and there's always going to be a lot of haters mm -hmm. but you know what all i can tell you is that it was a great experience yeah. and anybody that did that was in that show did it because they wanted to be there yeah. they weren't paid to be there they were just living their life and what they do mm -hmm. and i was there to take care of them so in terms of negatives from that show just a bit of hate really from, from your side no um, I, just, I just saw it on youtube i just i didn't i never get it from anybody personally, anybody coming up to me no, is no, so they happy. And but they wouldn't dare. But you have keyboard warriors that they call them that yeah, want to yeah, say stuff on there, and they, you know, they never say it to your face, but they they say it on there, and, and they, but they don't know. Yeah. And everybody, listen, everybody lives. Some people live a boring life, yeah. and they got to create drama or they want to create rumors so they can be the first to do it. We see it in the news right now with the media, with all this stuff going on, right? Everybody wants to be a first at something. Mm -hmm. So if you can create something, and I saw it, somebody would say something, and then I saw a lot of people, and thank you to all the positive people out there, came back and would argue with those people and say, no, it wasn't like that. I've met Richard, he's this way, he's that way, he's credible. A lot of people said I wasn't credible. Well, I, I, I loved it when people came back and said, no, Richard's very credible. Go on his Instagram, you'll see all the celebrities well, he yeah, takes absolutely. care of. Yeah. I can't take care of those rich and famous people mm. if I'm not credible. No. So it was very interesting to see people defending me and my character without even knowing me mm. and just seeing but that's just it. the internet in general isn't it let's yeah. be honest I mean yeah. it's, you're gonna we, we you probably it. get it I get it a little I'm bit. sure you get it you know, I don't know why you're, it you're, a, you're a great guy <laughs> but, you know? no, but it's just people <laughs> they're too quiet I don't know you know <laughs> but, it, but it's, it's just people that um, it's, it's just jealousy that's what it is yeah. ultimately and um, people you know they, if they see you in Vegas or you with, with celebrities whatever it might be that, that, that's, that's what drives and I get that the most listen I get I get a lot of jealousy but if people got to know me if you walk up to me and I'm and I'm standing, let's let's use James Gandolfini from The Sopranos because everybody knew The Sopranos. Mm -hmm. If he was standing here talking to me, we're talking as friends, and you walked up, not to meet him, but you knew who he was, but you were coming to me to tell me you just checked in or something. Mm -hmm. I would say, hey, Matt, meet Jimmy, mm -hmm. and you'd be meeting as friends, not as the star of The Sopranos, mm -hmm. and not as Matt as mm -hmm. uh, as you as a guest. Mm -hmm. You'd be meeting through me, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and that'd be a big deal. And you'd sit there and you talk and laugh about it, right? Because it's that kind of moment. Yeah. That's how I am. Mm. I don't say, Matt, give me a minute. Yeah, 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 you sure. know, unless I'm in a, something's wrong or something, but I don't ignore you. Yeah. So I tell people that all the time. I might be with a UFC fighter and you, you what just happened, I was with WWE stars, uh, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch. They, they were in here staying and we had a big player in. He says, oh, and the host came to me and says, listen, if you could get something signed. I said, you know what, forget about getting something signed. Let's see if we can get a picture with them. Mm. Because then he can go back to his kid who's a big fan and says, yeah, look, look daddy this. took yeah, a picture absolutely. with Tom. And that's bigger than a, a, a signature. Yeah. And we made it happen. I made it happen for them. Yeah. So I'm happy to. And the people that I take care of, whether they're celebrities or whatever, they're happy to do it. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? I don't take advantage of them. Mm -hmm. And they're happy to, to do anything for their fans. As, as long as it's respected and as long as they're not rude about it, they'll do anything for their fans. You know? So... I've seen that, and, and people get jealous because they think that way. That, that, oh, I'm walking around with Rihanna, or I'm walking around taking care of Justin Timberlake or something. You know, yeah. so what? 
it's just another person I'm taking care of in Vegas, yeah. just like I would take care of them, yeah. you know? So, so in terms of, uh, just going back to the documentary, in terms of, um, do you think that it's helped your career since, since 2005? Has it had a direct impact on it, or would that be too grand to say that? The documentary. The documentary. No, I think I think what the documentary did was give me some exposure, but I think the documentary gave Vegas a lot of exposure. Mm-hmm. gave uh, gave a lot of different um, different views were able to be seen now from a player's aspect, from a host aspect, mm-hmm. uh, from a slot player's aspect. I mean, it gave you a lot of different angles to view Vegas, on, and I think that's what the show captured. Mm-hmm. Listen, if I went to the UK tomorrow, if I'm walking down the street, would people recognize me like I was a star? I don't know. They would. I don't know. But that's where I would notice a difference. If you stood in the Hippodrome uh, Casino in Leicester Square in London, yeah. Uh, yeah, so there would probably be a queue around the block, Richard. That, that, that'd be funny. That'd be very funny. <laughs> You'll have to come over one time. I might have to come over. We've got a spare room. You can stay with me. It's fine. <laughs> so, but that, that's the way I would be able to tell. But, you know, I could say probably every weekend, uh, there's somebody from the UK or somebody that saw that show yeah. stopping me and taking a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's very interesting. We were shooting, we were shooting that um, the the uh, one of the one of the shows. Um, Eamon and Ruth. Eamon and Ruth. Yeah. We were shooting that over at the Golden Gate. And just as we were doing that, there was a UK couple there that came over and said, "Do you mind if we get a picture with you? We watched that show, Gambling in Las Vegas, Willie really Thurl." I thought, "Yeah, sure." And I went to them and I said. Isn't that funny? You got two people from the UK right yeah. here, and they recognized and they didn't even from it, and they didn't do anything with them. Really? So yeah, which was crazy. Yeah, because yeah, totally. There are two people from the UK. Yeah, yeah. But I think it was a conflicting. Well, shows. while we're on the subject of Eamon and Ruth, I mean, uh, for me, that documentary wasn't great. Um, and I did actually tweet something out, and Eamon actually came back to me, telling me to go away. But uh, <laughs> and I, to me, it, 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 tri- it trivialized Vegas and made it look. Um, it was just wrong. They made it look like a. Uh, uh, sort of like a, a bit like Blackpool in the UK, where it's very uh, like kiss me quick hats, and everyone's just throwing up in the street, and you know it's it, it, it really trivialised. Well, I, the I whole didn't know thing. that because yeah, I haven't seen it. So yeah. um, um, how was it? How was it to work on compared to the Louis one for you? Well, they were they were they were great people to work with. I mean, they you know they didn't show me any any negativeness. Um, I even helped create some stories for them. Helped you know do what I could to to make it interesting. And, um, they asked questions, we answered them, and um, you know they, they were fascinated by Vegas themselves. So what I saw them filming was stuff that they were interested in. I, th- I think the difference was that with, with, with them, as we were saying, with getting access to the high rollers with Louis, with them there was none of that. Um, they ended up getting spanked down at the Heart Attack Grill. That, it, was, it was that sort of, that's the difference. I mean, you wouldn't have Louie doing that. Listen, you, you, um, you come into Vegas, if you come into Vegas, you, yeah. you know what you want to film and what you don't. Yeah, yeah. And with Louie, he had full access um, to film some, some great scenes, some yeah. great things, uh, and some great people. Uh, that was probably the difference. They come, you come in and try to hit all the different spots in Vegas. Mm. Are you gonna see some of the seediness of Vegas? Yeah, because it yeah, creates drama. Yeah. yeah. What are you? What, are you going to come in and show all nice fluffy things? Yeah. Because fluffy things are f- fluffy. But for me, you call it, 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 there's a balance. There is a balance. And that, but, I think that's the, there was no balance in that for me. So look, was, and Louis does some documentaries yeah. that would would scare the crap out of me to go and do. You know, and and all the kudos to him for doing it. Yeah. But you know, it makes for interesting television. Mm. So, you know, nobody can come and do what Louis does because Louis's Louis. Louis mm. You know, but. They come out in Las Vegas. It's a hot topic. Mm. So from that, everybody wants to know about Vegas. Everybody wants the stories and some of the stories I've told you yeah, yeah, that not everybody's heard of. You no, know, absolutely. so everybody wants to come here and create their stories. And you got to think about that. Yeah. We 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 forget that we live in Las Vegas, or you live in New York, or you live in LA, and you might see a celebrity, mm. but we forget about the rest of the world that may never see a celebrity. Mm. So when they come to Vegas and they see somebody, or they come with their friends mm. and they try to they dress up as Elvises because they want attention. Mm. You know, they might work in their nine to five jobs and there's nothing wrong with that. But they sit there and while they're pushing their pencil and thinking of, they're thinking about Vegas mm. and Absolutely. can't wait to get to Vegas. And when they get here, they want to create a, a a fun trip that they can live vicariously through the rest of the year until they can come back. Yeah. And that's what gets them through their days. Yeah. Hey, God bless them because I'll tell you what, I love that because I get to create some of those stories with them. 
and they could say, oh, Richard, that's the greatest thank you I can get. Oh, reach did this for us, that's awesome. And they remember that, mm. and they go live vicariously through that. Mm. That's what Vegas is all about. Mm. I've seen people come here and wear outfits that they would never be caught dead. Oh, God, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> never be caught dead. Yes, Some people go and spend all their, they max out their credit cards, and they go pay it off for the rest of the year. Yeah. But you know what? You gotta do that. Yeah. You gotta escape, and that's why Vegas is still so popular. Yeah. You can have all the casinos in the world pop up by your, your local casinos, which are great, mm. because it offers, I go to my local casino because it's got a movie theater, mm. you know? But it's not Vegas. It's not Vegas. So you might have come here five times a year. Now they opened up a casino near your house. So maybe you only come three now, but you still come. Mm. Mm. And that's the problem. That's the, that's the best thing about it. Mm. You know, because you get to escape your reality, come here and live out the fantasy land. Mm. And there's people doing things they would never be caught doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and then they gamble, they drink, they go out and party at night in yeah. the best nightclubs in the world. They eat five star in the best restaurants in the world. We have them all here. Yeah. And, and we're the entertainment capital of the world. Absolutely. Right? So they come here, they escape the reality, and they have fun. Yep. And that's what Vegas is all about. Totally. Thanks for being so open with this chat. There's three questions just to finish uh -oh. off. Uh, uh, I'm sure everyone knows what I'm going to ask, but uh, there are three people from uh, the Louis documentary. Uh, we had uh, Dr. Martha Oldman, the slot player, uh, who gambled away something like, was it four million or something? Uh, we had uh, John, uh, the blackjack player, um, and obviously Alan, uh, who we've spoken about uh, already. Um, what happened to Martha? Is she still in Vegas? You know, Is she still gam gambling at Westgate? Think. She's gotta be. I think she's, I, I, I did actually look on Google and I think she's about 82 now, but she's still on the voters roll. So I, I don't know. <laughs> well, anybody could be on voters well, roll yeah, still, but, but you gotta think that was 15 years ago and she was already pretty old. Yeah. I don't know what happened to her. She was somebody else's player at the time. Um, she was spending a lot of money. She was smoking a lot, so I don't know. So, I, I really, I've never seen Martha again since that. Since that, I've never. Filming. After I left um, the Las Vegas Hilton at the time, I've never seen her again. Never heard about her again. Um, I don't know. I honestly can't tell you. I don't. I, I don't know what ever happened to her. Okay. Um, and in terms of uh, John the Blackjack player, there's, there's very again various rumors, and it, but the fact that there's various rumors um, tells you just how popular that show was. I mean, if otherwise, no, no, no one would be bothered. What, but, what um, was his name again? Uh, John. John. He, he, he was the guy with a... Uh, the gold tea, the black yeah, gold he, tea. He had, he had like kid. 20 grand and then he lost... And they that, lost, they lost money and they were exactly. all pissy yeah, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, those are, so those are just two guys that we were filming. They were salesmen. Late, yeah. They were filming late at night and Louis passed by the table and saw them play and they were being boisterous with the dealer and everything. He said, oh, okay. He went over and, and and I talked to them too and said, "Listen, guys, you want to be on this this documentary?" And they were they were like, uh, "Okay, yeah, sure," and they did. And you kind of saw their attitude a little bit with Louis. Yeah, it was open, and then when they lost, they yeah, were kind of yeah, like they, they were they were the kind of guys that seemed like they were gambling with stuff they couldn't afford to be gambling with. That's yeah. what they seemed like. I agree. And you saw their attitude change because you saw the difference with Alan when he lost. Yeah, his attitude didn't change. Yeah. So they seemed like they came in with a lot of money hoping they were gonna double it and take it home, and they weren't doing that. Yeah. So um, those guys weren't, uh, I don't wanna say they weren't anybody, they weren't players that I knew about. Yeah. They weren't big players of mine, they weren't of really anybody that I knew there in a way of hosting. I knew it was somebody in the show that uh, wanted to get on camera and gamble with Louie on camera, and Louie got to play some blackjack with mm -hmm. him. So, um, I mean, there's a rumor that, uh, that John got um, killed in a hit and run. I don't even know who the guy is. I mean, so I couldn't even tell you that. I I, even, hopefully, it's not I true. I don't even know how they he's would gambling find somewhere in Vegas that information. Right now. I, yeah. Listen, unless they ran into him in Vegas or they ran him in somewhere and found that out, like, yeah. he, like they knew about him, they could follow him or they knew him. That's the only way you're going to find that kind of information yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, sure. Because you, I you've even not had any. I couldn't any, even remember the guy's name. No, no. So, you know what I mean? So. Okay. That's and, the difference. And the big question, obviously. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, again, another rumor. Uh, somebody put something up of uh, their Uber driver being Alan. Um, is Alan an Uber driver? All right, so the story with Alan, and to put it to rest for everybody. Yeah. Yes, he drives an Uber. Okay. But let me explain something about Alan. Alan had a big company back home. He sold 50% of it. Then he ended up selling all of it. And, um, Alan had some life troubles, um, and you all got to know Alan. Alan gambled with the money he could afford to, mm -hmm. 
didn't affect his livelihood, didn't affect his family, didn't nothing like that. Alan had um, a, a very, a very sad, tragic thing happened to one of his sons, changed his whole life. But, and um, people don't know that. People want to jump to conclusions that he went broke and he's driving an Uber. No, he's not. He's he's retired mm -hmm. and spending time with his other two kids, okay. his two boys and his family. And because of that tragedy that happened to his third son, was um, was terrible. That's what and and I don't wish it on anybody. And and it's something that I went through with him, and and it it, it was a very sad time. Mm -hmm. And that's enough to change anybody's way of living. Yeah, yeah completely. And. Um, I wouldn't want to go to Vegas anymore, and I wouldn't want to be away from my kids. Mm -hmm. I'm a father. I know that. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't want to be away from them at the, for long periods of time yeah. and having fun without them. Mm -hmm. You know, it just it, when you're a father, you understand that. Mm -hmm. If you're a good father, you understand that. Um, and Alan was was always a good family man. Right. So he's driving an Uber, and for Alan, you kind of saw Alan's. You saw Alan's personality mm -hmm. he had to always be talking to people yep. he was always joking around Alan loved to talk yep. and he loved to be sarcastic when you're retired who can you be that way with does he know how famous he is <laughs> he'll always joke around and say you know I don't think I signed off to be on that thing like he'd always joke around and give me a hard time about it but um, no but he gets into the yeah he drives Ubers and he drives them for long distances because he gets to talk to people and I think that's what Alan loves to do is talk to people and that's why Uber is perfect for Alan. Yeah, yeah. And then sure enough he's single now so he can he can meet the young girls that he picks up and I'm sure dates or whatever if he wants to. I don't know. That's <laughs> Alan. He loves <laughs> talking to everybody, you know. But um, no, but Alan listen, Alan's a great guy and if you got to know him you would all love him. Yeah. You'd all hang out and have a beer with him and listen to his stories and what he has to say. Listen, I bet he's got hundreds of stories. He's got hundreds of stories. Yeah. And they're different from mine, and some of them include me. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just, but that, yes, Uber, yeah, I saw the receipt that said Alan. Yeah, that was Alan. Mm -hmm. But it's just something. He doesn't do it six days a week. He does it three days here, four days here. He does it when he's bored, mm -hmm. you know? And, and that's the luxury of that way you can do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's not doing it for the money. No, no, sure. You think yeah. a guy went from that kind of money broke to driving an Uber? Yeah. Listen, no way. You drive. Do you, don't you drive? Yes, I do. Yeah. You, so I've, again, I've made a, a lifestyle decision to get out of corporate life and, and do something that's um, more work-life balance related. Um, you're you're a perfect, perfect example. People make decisions. You're a perfect you know? example. Yeah. That you you wanted to get out of the corporate. You wanted yeah. he wanted a slower life. Yeah. You wanted to slow down life. This guy lived the fast lane. Mm. We saw that on camera. Yeah, yeah. He so, lived in a fifteen thousand square foot suite, one of the biggest in North America. Mm. Yes, I said that on camera. Mm. And everybody said, oh, how does he know that? In a way of a casino, yes, it's one of the biggest. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he was in that. We saw how he lived in Vegas. Yeah. He told you it was bigger than his house, you know? Yeah. But at the same time, he went back home and years go go by. And, and you know what? You, you lose track of people and you don't, you don't know what happens in their daily lives. And in his personal life, he had some tragedies. Yeah. And because of that, it changed the way he was. Can't fault him for that. No, 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 and no. and he doesn't gamble anymore. He might go to casinos there, but he doesn't come to Vegas and gamble. But you're, you're still mates, the two of you. Absolutely, Fantastic. absolutely. That's good I, I love the guy. Yeah, but the guy's one of the best guys in the world. You know, I absolutely. I, I feel for him for for the things he went through. But besides that, yeah. no, he's living a good life still. And did you ever own a mattress by by his, by his company? No, I was I was so I so wanted to get into having a mattress store here and him yeah. shipping me mattresses yeah. because it was a good business. Well, he could, he could, he could supply them for the for the hotel, couldn't he? Well, you, you know, I did. Wait a second, I did get I did get mattresses supplied to the Golden Nugget. Oh, okay, there you go. Through Alan. Yeah. So they did. They bought for all their suites. They bought all the high end mattresses, right. and they everybody loved them. And then they started doing the Golden Nugget mattress, I believe, and people could order them. Oh, wonderful! That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. But. Um, yeah, Alan. Listen, Alan. That that's the true story. Don't let yeah. anybody tell you different. You're hearing it from me. I'm the closest thing you're gonna ever hear about yeah. Alan. Um, if you get into an Uber with him and you're lucky to, he might not share all his personal things with you, but you sure will share the stories. Yeah, fantastic. of what's gone through his life. So.
Listen, Richard, you have been so kind. My um, pleasure. I say thank you for Saturday. I mean that sincerely. It was one of the best nights I've ever had in Vegas in 21 years of coming. It was just remarkable. So thank you so much. So I created a first for you. You, you certainly did. Yeah. And, and you 100%. got to meet some incredible people. Absolutely. I Absolutely. wanted to show you VIP style. Yeah, I know. Well, that's, so. we certainly got that. And uh, so thank you so much for that. My and pleasure. Thanks so much for being so open on this chat. I mean, it's um, it's not often that you, you know I get the chance to speak to someone like you and. Uh, so uh, yeah, this will go out on YouTube and uh, everyone's gonna love it, I'm sure. So yeah, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Man. Absolutely, anytime. So I really hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I did recording it. It was a real pleasure to talk to Richard. So thank you, Richard, once again. Uh, and I will certainly see you in my next Vegas trip later this year. Uh, thanks also to Hog and Two Cent for videoing the interview and the moral support as well. Um, and uh, I will see you guys on the next video. Uh, until then, take care of yourselves and stay safe.